much just so whatever hey guys so today i am doing a sew along with nicole or vice versa she's doing one with me depending on whose channel you're watching this on when it gets uploaded to youtube um so she made this super fun pattern i've personally never seen one for this um it is available on her website and it's such a well-written pattern and it's only four pages which is amazing um so it says to cut out the can cooler body which is a finished measurement and then you just cut out the negative space which i absolutely love um, i think that is so cool that it's just these tiny little pattern pieces that um, are easily cut out. Um, so right now I'm cutting that. It says you can use cork, thin leather, or vinyl. So I'm gonna use my rotary cutter. Hello, Frederica kind of lining it up on this straight edge of the fabric. And I have sewn with cork all of maybe two times. Good morning, guys. Hello. All right, so I've got the main body piece. I'm just gonna trim it down. And then she, Nicole is actually gonna do a video showing you guys how she uses her like silhouette cameo to cut it out. Super cool. All right, so we've got our long strip of fabric, and then I'm going to grab my pattern piece, A and B, grab, good morning, Aslan. Um, so we've got a one inch test square here. I'm gonna test it. Looks good. All right, sorry. I'm not used to how close this camera is. Good morning, Judy. And this pattern does call for Insulbrite. Um, I do not have any on hand, so I'm just gonna use regular quilt uh, batting or the Thermalam. No, I don't have that. <sighs> okay, so we've got our long piece ready to go. So I am marking out the areas it says to kind of put little marks at. I'm just using like a silver Sharpie, making really light lines, which is good.
um, later today, well, I guess in like an hour or so, when Nicole and I are making this live together, uh, we're going to uh, do her quilting method as well. She's going to show us how she does it. So get excited for that. And she'll also be doing a video of her cutting it out using her cameo, which I probably already said. But I'm very sleepy and I don't feel well. All right. So that one stays there and then I'm going to put this here. One, two, three. Oh, just looks like more. All right, so this one goes in the middle of your pattern. I think Nicole mentioned she sells a lot of these at shows, or at least has started to anyway. So that's cool. These seem like a really good um, gift idea, something quick you can whip up, which I'm all about. Angel. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hold on to my pattern pieces, save them for later. I always like to clip them together and then clip them to the instructions or something like that. Then I need to cut my batting. I feel like I have scraps of this somewhere, but that's okay. Awesome, Nicole. I meant to text you and then I was like, what if she's busy? I don't know, anxiety, it's fun. But I decided to go with cork and then I'm gonna use this rainbow cork to applique like a little cat head or something. I'm that loser. Anyway. So we're cutting two of these batting pieces. And my batting is fusible, so I don't know if I should just fuse it. Nicole, if you're watching, would I be able to just fuse this? Hi, Sandra. Oh, unicorn tears. <laughs> and I might end up just like cutting out a heart or something. So it just takes two little pieces of that Inselbright batting. Don't iron cork. Okay. I know that I've interfaced cork before using my heat press, but I do know not to add any steam, which is weird because it should be like heat, it should be like heat resistant and stuff, right? <laughs> All 
I don't know. I'm learning so much about cork. Um, so I'm just making nice smooth cuts on this cork so that there's no scraggly edges. I have used heat, yeah, just on the inside, right? Wrong side up. That makes sense, that's kind of what I was thinking. Nikki says the adhesive that holds the cork to the fabric backing is weakened by heat. Makes sense. All right. It's really funny. I saw um, on my YouTube while I was watching some other people's channels, I saw an ad for this like new bag company that's like, <laughs> what is it? I want to say boo-boo bark, but I know that's totally wrong, but it was something along those lines. I was like, cool. <clears throat> oh, that's good. All right. I think, yes. I've got it all cut out according to the diagram. So I've got this chain of pieces. And then your insulbright is gonna go um, on the center next to the larger cutout pieces and then kind of center it within that seam allowance. I'm gonna trim this one down. I did not cut it precisely, I cut it, so that's why I'm trimming it down. Hey, there we go, much better. At least that's what the people who sell cork say. So it's all a lot of he said, she said going on right now, huh? Hello, Genevieve. Okay. Fold short, short edges. Okay. Cool. Repeat for the right side, short edge, and then quilt it all together. So you're gonna fold these over, kind of line up that center. I'm just gonna kind of clip it together for now. I probably won't fuse the quilt or the batting in, because I've been told not to, for one. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna kind of clip this for now and watch to see what Nicole does, because I'm excited to watch. Awesome. Um, but I am going to kind of cut out a little something from this to put on there. What, you ask? I don't know. I honestly kind of wanted to mimic this design on my cup. Thank you, Nikki, again for my cup. Um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna like trace something out. I realize it'll be backwards when I put it on here, so keep that in mind, but I don't, I don't care that it'll be backwards. So I'm just gonna kind of go for it. Uh, Nicole, from what I've seen, does a lot of reverse applique as well as just straight up applique, so that's why I thought I'll do some applique too. I'm just gonna do a fluffy little kitty head. Of course there isn't enough room for his tail, but I can kind of put it above him maybe. Mm. Sure, that looks fine. space there. 
But will it fit? Uh, no, it will not. Hello, Inga. <laughs> okay, so I traced out this little cat design, but it's not going to fit. So I think I'll just cut out like two little cat heads or something. I think that'll be fun. So I'll fold this in half this way. And I'll just cut out like two little cat heads. Two little cat baby heads. All right. All right. We'll go with that. Okay. Hey, I like it. It kind of looks like a spaceship. <laughs> I don't care. Maybe I'll, I'll make one look a little more sleek, like Ben, and the other one will be nice and fat like Connor. Well, I mean, that's it as far as cutting it go goes. Uh, so at around noon, Nicole and I uh, will be doing a joined live. So it'll be like split screen and she'll be kind of talking me through how to make it. Uh, Cause God knows I'm not gonna read a pattern before I make it. I'm lazy, it's fine. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Hi everybody. Um, I just finished watching Lauren's live of cutting out the can cooler pattern and so I am going to pop on here and show you how I use my SVG file on my brother's scanning cut. Um, I'm going to be moving my phone around as I do it so and that's what I'm recording on so I apologize for um, any any problems with me moving around like that. Anyways, okay, so I saw that Lauren's using cork now. Initially she's gonna use vinyl, but I'm glad she's using cork. Um, and so I'm also going to be using a rainbow cork too. I've never made um, a, cool, a cooler. Koozie is trademarked, so can't say that. I've never made a can cooler out of this cork, so I'm really excited. It's super soft and flexible, and it doesn't crack when you bend it, which, what you want. Okay, so anyways, to get started, I'm going to just flip this around a whole bunch of times. If you're interested, I'm going to go ahead and do the main cut of cork for the can cooler. I have way too much stuff on my table. And also, Good morning slash afternoon to everybody. Let's see. All right, so I just have my rectangle. And I'm going to be using my brother's scan and cut machine to actually cut mine out. So I'm going to load. I have my 12 by 24 mat. And I'm going to load my. Put that in a safe place on the ground over there. But I'm going to load my uh, cork onto my mat. And because cork does have a, um, a backing that likes to come off, you know, it's like woven backing. I always use basting spray and I just kind of hit it. I just spray it right on top of my mat. I, I kind of break all the rules, so. But I'm just gonna hit it at the corners. 
the top and bottom corners and then here in the middle because that's where the blade's actually going to be cutting and that's where I don't want the cork to shift. I'm going to go ahead and lightly spray it. And I line mine up one inch in and one inch down because the um, cutting machines don't like to cut all the way to the very edge. Um, they have like a, a bleed area and it's really annoying. So I just move it in and down. So I've got my mat loaded. And like I said, so I load it one inch in and one inch down. I don't mind all the other cuts. I use this mat a lot, as you can see. Um, yeah, I noticed Lauren's going to do an applique on hers and this, the, this is the only one that I have that has a reverse applique that I can show you. But what I did is I cut this out on my cutting machine, this lightning bolt, and I inlaid tie dyed fabric behind it. But normally I do cork behind it. Um, but yeah, this pattern, you can re reverse applique like this. You can applique on top. You can leave it plain. You don't have to do anything. It's really fun too because you can add like contrast stitching. So this one has bright green um, or just do a matching stitching. Really, you can just do whatever you want. So I've got my mat loaded and I'm going to flip the my camera around. I'm going to show you the process that I go through on my cutting machine. Um, I have already gone ahead and sent the file from my computer to my machine, which I did um, over Wi-Fi. makes it a lot easier. Um, so yeah, that's already taken care of, but I'm going to show you how I find it in my machine and then how I load my mat and blah, blah, blah. So here we go. You're on the move. Okay, so I've got my machine. I've got it turned on. Move it closer to me. So again, this is a brother scanning cut. Um, this is the main screen. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to press pattern. And then, like I said, I already have it saved. But normally, you would uh, press that to get it from your computer to here. And then pull it up. But because I've already done that, I have it saved in my machine. I'm going to go down and find it. Oh, so here it is. So here is my file. Oh, just, come here. And so I'm going to press OK. Oops, my thing doesn't wanna, there we go. All right, so I'm going to move my file to be on the mat where my cork is. So one inch in and one inch down. And it's really easy. You can just grab the file and move it around like that. So... Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, we all have a hard time. There we go. Okay, so one inch in, one inch down. Okay, so there we go. We we're all set. I'm going to tell it to cut. And then I'm going to load my mat, which is really simple. Just line it up right there. Press this mat loading button. And then just so you know, I have my blade at an eight and a half or so. Hold on, I'm gonna put you back down. Sorry, I don't have like fancy equipment. I know that Lauren doesn't either, but I don't have like any equipment. Normally I do it on my computer and it's a little bit easier, but we're just gonna bumble through this together. So yeah, I adjusted my blade depth to be an eight and a half and normally when you have a fresh blade it doesn't have to be at eight or eight and a half i think i started at like a six or a seven and then because i use the blade so often i have just been upping it um upping the blade depth okay so i've got it all loaded up ready to go my blade and so i'm just going to tell it to start Oh, yeah, my hair does match my eyes. So I've been hearing that for a while. I've had blue hair for a long, long time now, but yeah, that's usually the number one comment that I get is that my hair matches my eyes. And yes, Lauren, all the unicorn, everything. All right, so it's gonna doing the two final cuts at the top here. 
and that's it. So we're gonna tell it, finish cutting, so we press okay, we're gonna tell it to unload the mat, slide that out, get this back out of the way, get you set back down. All right, so we've got it cut. I'm just gonna peel it off. Adding the basting spray definitely makes it a lot more sticky, but um, I prefer that. But yes, so get this out of the way and it's a very safe place on the ground. And grab my scissors. Like I said, yeah, the um the cutting machine, I don't know, I I can never get it to cut all the way through to the very edges on most things, unless it's cutting in the middle of something. But so yeah, just have scissors handy and then I just do the final snips here. And then there we go. So now my can cooler is all cut out, ready to go as well. I already have my Insole Bright. And just like Lauren said in her video, you lay it and just kind of lay it to where you have a little bit of depth or seam allowance, not depth. Normally I don't record video, so I stumble a lot <laughs> with my words, but yeah, so not depth, but seam allowance, you want to have about a quarter inch on every side, and then we would fold it over just like Lauren did, got some clips, and you just want to make sure to match all of the cutouts. And there we go. I'm actually gonna go back and add my tag to it because I am gonna sell this at a festival that I have coming up. So if you have a tag and you don't want your stitching to show through on the other side, you would actually add it before doing your batting. And I add mine to where they're down on the inside so when there's a cup or a can in there, this goes along the bottom, you don't see it. And so my tag is just right there, hugging the, the bottom. So yeah, I'm gonna go back and add my tag to right there. Sew that down and then I'll put my batting back on it and then I'll quilt around my tag whenever Lauren and I are doing our live. But, all right, so there we go. Um, that's basically it, super simple to cut. You saw Lauren do it, I think it took her 10 minutes at most and she was scanning and recording and all of that jazz. And then it takes one minute to, for the machine to cut it um, and one second to cut out the actual rectangle of quirk. I think the, the longest part of this video will be us quilting our uh, batting to the quirks. So yeah, tune in. We're going to go live here in a minute. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, sweet. Okay. So I was just changing my thread. Let me try to find a better position for my phone now that. It's like, it won't let me do it the other direction. Yeah, I was going to say. Hey, that works perfectly. There we go. So, I yeah, I was just changing my thread. I'm going to do contrasting thread in mine. I'm going to do purple. Pretty. I, I went with pink. Oh, there we go. What color, what kind of thread do you usually use? Um, you know, I have a bunch of Aura fill that, I that I've been using, but what I'm noticing recently is that it keeps snapping and breaking on me, so I've been switching to just good old-fashioned Coates and Clark. Nice. What kind of thread do you use? Um, I have, like, Guterman Mara 100 that I bought a ton of when I thought it was good for bag making, but lately, um... I mean, that's all I use in this machine, but I went with a Tech 60, no, Tech 70 bonded nylon because it was the only pink I had laying around. Okay. Yeah, I don't find, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the seamstresses that it doesn't, thread doesn't right. really, um, like, affect me very much, yeah. but I just kind of buy what colors I want to sew on. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, also, how are you? I haven't seen you since. The retreat, I know. Yeah. Um, I am great. Good. I'm excited to make something for just fun of it, honestly. <laughs> for what? Just to have fun with it. Oh, yeah, I got you. 
Um, so you have your, so I guess my question for you too is your applique, are you going to sew that down before or after? Before. Before. Okay, so you want to go ahead and get started on that, and then I will glue my um, interfacing to my cork. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a quilt basting spray to set it down so it doesn't shift. And then you just sew through both layers for that, right? Since it's yep, so after I have layer. the interfacing um, stuck down, I clip it like how you have yours, and then I just quilt through all of the layers, and I just avoid my tag. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, so if you're going to applique first, though, and you don't want to applique, or you don't want to quilt over your applique, I would, yeah, do that before starting. And also, for anybody watching, I live and breathe Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. Um, I work almost solely in cork, and so this is the glue that I always, always use for all of my projects. I used to have a bottle of that. Some oh, I do have it. That's funny. yeah. I love this stuff. I don't know why it's over by my serger, <laughs> but I do have some. Um, yeah, I like it because it dries super quick and it um it doesn't leave. It doesn't dry matte or any like it dries clear is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm not good with words. Uh, no, same. Don't even worry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, recording for people and just being live on videos, I always feel like I have to rush through things. So it's nice to watch your videos. It's it's like having a friend in the room. Yeah. It's even nicer when someone will go live with you. So it's like literally having a friend. In yeah, room. exactly. This is fun. I've never done this before. Yeah. I've done it a few times, but um, it got way too conversational and people were like, this is boring. This is annoying. And I was like, well, sorry. Yeah. Didn't mean to ignore you. <laughs> um, do you recommend before you start quilting to just sew around all the edges first to kind of base it together or no? So I do that at the very end because with quilting, the cork is going to shift just ever so right. slightly. So I do all of my quilting and then at the very end I do the, um, the final stitch all the way around. Gotcha. And then do you trim your raw edges to line them up? Like mine, for some reason, don't meet perfectly, probably because I cut it by hand. Do you trim that down? I do, yeah. And again, I normally wait until the end. Um, yeah. And mine, even even with my cut file, which I don't know what that says about me, but mine <laughs> don't meet up perfectly either. Yeah. But yeah, so after I quilt, I just go up and I, um, or I go around and tighten all my edges and make them as, you know, um, flush as possible. Yeah. I'm so excited to sew with this cork. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, Inga, yes, I am using cork. Um, and then what machine do you have again? I have a Juki TL2010Q. 2010. Okay, so the, the difference between my machine and her machine is she can control the speed setting mostly. Mm -hmm. Um, mine does not have that, but I have used that machine before and I was like, this is expensive and I can't make huge bags with it. So, yeah, I, um, if I did it again, I probably would not get this machine just because of the cost and, um, it's kind of a pain in my arse. <laughs> Honestly, whenever it's messing up on me, like I have some tension issues probably because of the threads that I yeah. use and I, you know, again, I just kind of, sew. I've never like taking classes or anything I just muddle through it as best I can so when I have tension issues and things I'm I spend a lot of time googling on how to fix stuff but if I was going to do it again I think I would go with the 1541 or the 8700 yeah, um, yeah. I've never actually sewn on those but they just seem um sturdier and that you can yeah. do more with them right yeah um the 8700 takes a different size bobbin so there was um one machine that I tried out that I think is almost exactly the 8700, but has industrial size bobbins, et cetera. So it's going to last you longer. Oh, okay. Which is and what is yours again? 
Uh, the one I have is the 1181. The 1181, yeah. yeah. It kind of seems like those are the popular, 1541, 8700, yeah. and 1181 are like the, I, I mean, you can see in the background, I have a Janome DC 2012. That thing, has, I've been rocking that for years. Um, <laughs> it, it, it works fine. Um, I just wanted to upgrade and join the Juki Club, and I, I feel like I researched and researched and researched until I was too scared to buy one, and then I finally yeah. just did. And the reason I went with this one is because I wanted it to be mobile, because we travel yeah. a lot. Yeah. And so... That was why I went with this. And I think for all intents and purposes, it, it works great now that I've really figured out how to use it. But yeah. a stationary machine, I would get a big boy. Like what you yeah, have. for sure. All right, so are you all done with your yes. applique? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so basically the next step is we're just gonna quilt all of the layers together. Um, I've seen people, they do like measured lines where actual quilting, um, I just kind of do wild style quilting. I just bounce yeah. all over back and forth. I love it. So you can choose your. I think I'm going to do like swirlies. Oh, super oh. fancy. Yeah. Um, and then do you like control your stitching so they don't go off the edge or. I do. I, I bounce around, but I do maintain and stay on the piece yeah, of cork. I don't necessarily stay within the, the seam allowance, which I tend to use a tight seam allowance, one eighth yeah. of an inch. Yeah. So I just bounce all around, but yeah, I keep it on the cork. And then okay. once you've quilted to your heart's content, what I would do is I would bounce to one edge and then you sew all around okay. the do you exterior sew, line. Do you sew across the top folded edge as well? Yep. Okay. Yep, and then all just all the way around every single exterior edge. Yes, okay, cool. And then when I'm sewing with cork, I tend to use a larger stitch length, so I have a three, but I kind of just like the way that that looks, so yeah. that's also entirely up to you. Yeah, I have mine set to like nearly a five, but our measurements may be a little different since our machines are different. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, I'll meet you on the other side of quilting. <laughs> Oh, one thing I will point out is the more stitch lines you put in this, the stiffer the can cooler will be. So think that about sense. that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's all just personal preference. I don't really mind it, um, but I have gotten or some feedback is that some people don't like their can coolers to be so stiff gotcha. it doesn't bother me though yeah because it's pretty stiff when there's a can inside of it too so, right you know <laughs> like how floppy And then you also want to be sure that you quilt along, mine's under my machine right now, but the the middle section, yeah. make sure you quilt those together too. Okay. I was just about to ask, do you sew a straight line along that little tiny conjoined area? I don't. I, okay. I normally just kind of leave it because the the final stitching around all the exterior will catch um, most of that. Oh, okay. But you can. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I love about this pirate. You can, it's basically, it's a, just a template and you can yeah. just do whatever you want. <laughs> right, with creativity. I feel like a lot of your patterns are written for creativity, which is cool. I try to, yeah, just take yeah. Um, techniques and pass them along and then apply it to a later pattern or a different situation. Yeah. I love that. Um, would this work with 
printed vinyl sheets? I think absolutely it would. Yeah, but I don't see why not. Printed. I don't, I can't see the comments, so that's why I'm not um, oh, answering okay. any of those. No, Let's you're see. fine. Luckily, I can read them too, which makes your life easier. There we go. <laughs> Turn my volume up. Um, printed vinyl, yeah, that should be just fine. Um, my patterns are all for textiles that you, that you don't have to finish the edges of. So leather, vinyl, you know, any cork, obviously. Um, anything that you don't have to finish the edges on. This can cooler can probably be made in fabric. Um, yeah. The only thing is with fabric, you'd want to waterproof it, obviously, so it doesn't become super heavy. Yeah. Um, but you could do like a French seam on the inside and flip oh, it. True. Yeah. Would you, do you think you would need to um, make your, your pattern a little bit bigger? Um, I would probably extend it on the sides by a quarter of an inch and start there to try with fabric. And then I would, I would use the one eighth seam allowance and then do the French seam just on the inside here. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect I guess. sense. Maybe. I don't know. That would take some finagling. I do think that it could work. I don't, I'll have to think on that one. I do think it would work though. I'd have, yeah. you'd have to do two pieces of fabric. Yeah. Flip it. And then you, yeah. Oh, Sorry, I wonder if you could, you could do a lining and an exterior and do like right sides together and leave a hole to turn it through and then top stitch and then do everything else. Exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. this one could, this uh, pattern could be easily applicable to fabric. My other patterns, not so much. Right. I have yeah. seen somebody take laminated cotton and they made my key fob wallet and that worked great and they just surged or not surged but they um overcast stitched the edges and it looked oh, really cool oh wow that's awesome yeah but my regular my wallet my bifold trifold i don't think like that would take some real thought to make those applicable to fabric <laughs> see i half the reason i use cork is because i'm just lazy i don't want to have to interface and turn and yeah, that and I feel like it really works with your aesthetic of your brand. Yeah, lazy. That's me. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> oh. Join Sonar, be lazy. <laughs> I think that's one thing I am bummed about. So Nicole and I met at the sewing retreat in North Carolina, and I was up really late helping teach, so I, I didn't get a chance to sew during her class, but I really wish that I had. Well, now we can have classes whenever we want. Whatever I want. Forever and ever. <laughs> oh, sweet. My phone's not to die. Also, could have planned that better. Let me grab my phone. Right oh, man, I just... All right, so I am to a point where I think I'm done with my quilting. So I am leaving my needle down and I'm just gonna pick up an edge and start sewing my exterior. section I do yeah okay. and I also just ran out of bobbin thread so that's awesome so fun I know not today bobbin but <laughs> yes today bobbin yes today Let's see. do you have your computer playing too no I can hear the video on a delay somewhere Oh, it's probably like the volume just reverberating. I'll turn down the volume and see if that helps. Okay. 
Yeah, that can be annoying. Okay, I love this so much. So I went with like swirlies to make it look like yarn. Cute. I love that with the contrast stitching. I'm just gonna pop a different color bobbin thread in mine. I am trimming mine so that all the edges are the same size. <laughs> Perfect. Um, if you were using leather, do you think it's something that would like benefit from an edge coat or anything like that? Or you wouldn't worry about it? So I'm not well versed in leather, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I would suggest if it's not waterproof on the edges, which I don't really know. Enough. I mean, it's skin, so I would think that it could deal fine with being wet. Yeah. But I um, think that some... might be more of a personal preference with um, how yeah. you want it to look, really. Gotcha. Um, some leather will kind of tighten and warp when it's wet. Okay. So, so it, it's necessary. Yeah, I've never so, done that. You know, but... you would have to just have the the knowledge on the type of leather that you're using. And then I would suggest for any and all of my patterns, if you're using leather to, I think I'm saying to skiv it or, you know, make Skive. it thinner. That's yeah. what that is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very thin it down. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes it easier to work with, especially the bifold. It gets kind of bulky on the last Ooh, I believe step. that. This is so cool. Um, if I take a lighter to the little frayed edges of cork, will that help or? Yep, that's what I was just going to say too. So, here we go. I got mine all done. Let me turn. Noise. Hold on, I'm grabbing a lighter. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so yeah, I've got mine all quilted now. I'm just going to snip my threads and then I'm going to check my edges as well. Do you and feel then, yeah, like I, there's oh. such a thing as like under quilting it? Or no? Um, again, I think that's just a matter of personal preference. I like the way it looks when it's quilted a lot, when it's quilted yeah. heavily. It's kind of hard I to know. see. I love it. This is actually pretty low quilting for me, I would say, because I'm just trying to go quickly. Yeah, and I mean, you can kind of see more of the rainbow. Yeah. The less quilted it is. It's so cool. Yeah, so I guess that's the thing. Depending on the textile that you're using, you know, sometimes I quilt heavily, sometimes I don't, because if you want to show off the natural look of the cork. All right, so my edges are all ready to go. Are they all yep. burnt? So what we're going to do now is fold right sides together, matching the top lip edges. Okay. Do you we'll just... have any tips, let's say, if they don't line up for any reason? With... You mean like if the top lip edges don't line up? If like if you line up your top and your bottom doesn't quite line up. Just trim it. Trim it down? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing with my patterns is they're pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, it's not going to change the overall effect of it. Like you can see mine is a little overlappy yeah. as well, but I'll just yeah. go back after we sew it and I'll just trim it. Perfect. I was just curious. Okay. All right, so yeah, next what we're going to do is we're just going to sew up the right and left side edges using okay. uh, about an eighth inch seam allowance. Cool. And then what stitch length would you recommend? Like that same three? I do tend to lower my stitch length to about a two and a half when I'm doing okay. the, the side seams. Okay, and you don't feel like that perforates it or anything? I have not had that experience. Um, as long as you don't sew over it about 800 times, I feel like you'd be pretty okay. And cork okay. in and of itself is a really strong textile, really durable. So I think you'd really have to punch a lot of holes in order for it to rip. And then do you think if someone was a real stickler about those raw edges that you could French seam the cork or it's just too thick and unnecessary? 
Yeah, it's too thick and unnecessary. But at the end, what I always do is finish my edges with Aline's fabric glue. I have a whole video on that in my sewing group. Um, and then that just seals the edges. I have heard of people using edge coat or leather edge paint to paint cork. Mm -hmm. I have heard that that's messy. So I have personally never done it because again, lazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, just clear glue is what I do on all my raw edges. Cool. And then of course you want to backstitch really well at the tops and the bottoms because those seams are going to be um, really stressed when we flip it. Right. Um, would you say like four times is enough? At four least. Times. Yeah, I would say at least four times. I just kind of go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> what if someone wanted to do two stitch lines really close together as well? Do you feel like that would be... I think that would work fine, but you still want to be sure that you backstitch really well, especially at the top, because we're going to be pushing and really pulling on it okay. to flip it. So yeah, just make sure start and stop, you want to backstitch multiple times. Yeah, so I do it about three times, it looks like. We should do like a virtual date and have our cats meet. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I don't know uh, if you can I... see, there's mine back there sleeping on my ironing board. That's amazing. My cat is sleeping on my um... couch. Oh, <laughs> is he all the way across on the couch? Yeah. Oh my gosh, so cute. I love that you it's have just... a couch in your studio, by the way. Yeah, no, there's actually, when we moved in, there was a, a dry bar. Oh. So there was no sink or anything, and I was like, I want that gone. <laughs> I had it for like six months, and I was like, okay, no, I want it gone. And then I put in a couch. <laughs> hey, seems like a good exchange. Right. I can't lay on a dry bar. Like... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what rest. And then do you trim down those edges at all? Yeah, I do. That's what I just did. I just had a little bit of overlap from where I was messy when I lined my edges up. So I just went back and trimmed off any excess. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect because that's going to be on the inside. Nobody's going to notice. Um, and it's just, it doesn't have to be an exact science. Gotcha. But yeah, so once you're all done doing your edges, trim your threads, line up your side seams and then we're going to flip it. I love this. It's so cool. I know it's so like straightforward but really usable. So at this point if you wanted to here's the glue that I use. I've had this bottle forever just a lean fabric fusion and I just dab it on all of my raw edges and then just wipe it with my finger and I let it dry. So that's, I would suggest doing it at this point if you wanted to do that. It makes it gotcha. easier so you don't flip that again. And then but, what do you do about this part here? Would you add any glue to that? I've got this little bit of gappage. Is that fine? That's fine because when we flip it, it's going to lie flat and you can see that's that the true. gap basically yeah. goes away. Yeah. All right. So to flip it, what I have found is, you know, stretch it out a little bit, push it together. And then I, with my thumbs, push the bottom in. And I just start flipping those bottom corners. Oh, okay. And then you're just going to push it. Flip it right side down. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, just kind of flatten it out. I put some pressure on the side seams. And there it is. Look at how it's cute. So cute. <laughs> I don't have a can, so I'm gonna put I know. a basting spray in it. 
Here, let me see. I bet I have a can. Let me go. Correct that. Left all my LaCroix upstairs. Uh-huh. Got it. All right, let's see. I smell the coconut water. There we go. Cute. So that's how it fits. This can is a little bit larger than a standard can, but you yeah. can see it fits well. Yeah, it's like a tall guy. Yep. I put what did you find? Oh, you're mine. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Um, so let's say somebody wanted to adjust the pattern to fit one of those tall cans. Um, would you just, you would add that length to. You would have to add it. So let me. We don't want to give out any specific measurements, but you want to maybe add the height of the can and then multiply that by two or would it be four? So what I would suggest, because you would add the height in the middle of the pattern where it folds over, uh -huh. you have to add it. So basically you'd have to, on a tall can, you would just want to see how much taller do you want it. So if you want it two inches taller, then you mm -hmm. need to add four. That's okay. And, yeah. In the middle at the, the five and the 15 mark. Whoa. I always just like um, to know how to adapt patterns because I can't always follow the directions. Yeah, um, that it could be done. Now, this the actual like if you're talking like a Michelob Ultra can or like the White Claw cans, the the boozy waters as I like to call them, those are not as thick as a regular can. So that would be a whole nother pattern because it'd be yeah. more narrow and taller. And I have plans on it. My mom is after me all the time to do it, but. How cute. Let me see yours. Will you hold it up to the camera? Cute. It's so I fun. love it. Yeah. I kind of want to make like 10 more now. I know they come together so quick. This is the perfect gift. Yeah. And I mean, for anybody who drinks anything, you know, they hold it. It took us 30 minutes, but we were also doing a lot of talking. Yeah. So I think it could take probably what, 15 minutes? Uh, yeah. And you can um, cut them, you know, batch cut them really quickly, especially with the cutting machine. That's why that's great because you just set it to cut while you're sewing and quilting the rest of them. But yeah, yeah I've made tons of these and they, it depends on what market I'm at. They do sell. Um, I sell mine for $18 and I think that's what turns people off. But if people are, cor uh, are koozie collectors, they'll pay for it. And then once yeah. they realize that it's cork and it's one of a kind, they don't normally have a problem. I was going to say, that seems like a very fair price. I feel like cork is more expensive than that, even. Yeah, I mean, cork is $72 a yard, so you have to really, yeah. <laughs> um, but you, so you get what you pay for, I guess? That's true. I don't know. No, so, you're absolutely right. Yeah, once you inform people about the benefits of cork, they tend to, they're fine with it. But like my other ones, when I reverse applique, I sold these for twenty one fifty, and they sold. This is the last one that I have. So yeah. it just depends on the market. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so cool. Does anybody have any other questions for Nicole? Or we'll give them a minute. Or do you have anything else you want to say? Um. Well, I don't. You can join my sewing group. It's Sonar Sewing Patterns on Facebook. And that there's a fly in here. Sorry. It, there's a, um, I also am on Instagram. It's just Sonar. It's S-E-W-G-N-A-R. Um, this is my newest pattern. It's the Can Cooler. And it is available on my website, PDF or as paper. And then you'll have the opportunity to win this pattern in Lauren's 10K giveaway. Which I'm posting very soon. I'm still waiting on some items, but... I'm going to do some like Instagram ones and ones in this group and then the big YouTube one too. I'm oh, excited. cool. I was wondering how that was all going to work out. Yeah. Here's... I'm just going to like trickle them around. I like that. Like Oprah. Yeah. You get a pattern. You. <laughs> I'm with that. Yeah, pretty great. much. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Super simple, straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to reach out and yeah. And then if you guys want to see us do some other of Nicole's patterns, let us know. She has super fun wallets that are made with cork that I've been meaning to try. They've been sitting Here's next one. to my machine. Here's the key fob wallet. Oh, got it upside down. 
So yeah, this is the popular one. I think that this would be a fun one because it's kind of tricky to add this back portion. So it's nice to have a video yeah. for this one. So yeah, I would love that. Maybe next month or something. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go get a LaCroix to put in this because I'm super excited. There you go. I'll, I think I'll finally drink this coconut water. It's been in my fridge for too long. <laughs> That's awesome, right? Thank you so much for hanging out with me and thank you to everybody else who came. We'll see you later. Bye guys. Thanks, Lauren.